Hello everyone. Today we'll talk about an extended list of translation procedures or strategies proposed by the British translator and scholar of translation, Peter Newmark. In a previous video, we discussed the famous typology of strategies or procedures by the French Canadian Vinay and Dabernay, who listed seven methods borrowing, calque, literal translation, transposition, modulation, equivalence, and adaptation. Now we'll talk about another classification of procedures. Newmark proposed a long list of procedures that may be used for problem solving in translation, particularly with culture specific terms. His classification of strategies could be aligned with those mentioned by Vinay and Dabernay. But let's first have a look at his classification of cultural terms, which could be a useful recipe for identifying areas where cultures may differ. The first is ecology, flora, fauna, hills, winds, plains, things relating to geography, plants, animals. For instance, how can we translate an animal that doesn't exist in another culture like a dub? Many translators say it's a lizard, but can't we find a more identifiable term? Material culture, food, clothes, houses, towns, transport. For instance, Falafel, agal, social culture, work and leisure, like Imam, Mu'adhin, Ashura, Eid al-Adha, organizations, customs, activities, procedures, concepts, which include further subcategories, political and administrative, as in political titles like Sheikh, which is a political position in some countries, religious, like the word Hajj, pilgrimage, artistic, like Mawashahat, Mawal verse, gestures and habits. This may involve, among many others, forms of address, ways of showing respect to others, greetings, eye contact, turn taking, body language. Refining the above methods of Vinay and Dabernay, Newmark proposes the following strategies for translating cultural specific terms. Transference. It's a strategy that one can use to transfer a word in its original form in the source text. We can directly import a foreign word in its original form and meaning from another language. Examples. Pizza in Italian, it's the same in Arabic, pizza, in English, pizza, Spanish, French, German, pizza. The word Hajj. The word Hajj is transferred directly into English without making any change to the original form in Arabic. In English, the letter J never ends a word. Naturalization. This procedure adapts a source language item first to the normal pronunciation of the target language, then to its normal morphology. For example, battery, battery. The ta sound doesn't exist in the English word, nor does the final ta marbuta. The same applies to al imamiya, imamis, by adding the plural suffix s to the Arabic word. Cultural equivalent. A source language culture item is translated by an equivalent target language cultural item while maintaining the same connotations. For example, to translate the famous two characters that are symbols of love in the Arab world, Qais wa Layla, one can think of Romeo and Juliet. 
to describe a person as beautiful in the Arab world people tend to use a natural object that is representative and has more or less some properties of the person to describe metaphorically for example for Arabic speakers the word moon is the first to come to their minds when describing a woman's beauty for the English people the moon is a vehicle signifying mostly paleness and sometimes sickness for the Arabs however it seems more to signify beauty color and activity this is because the moon in the Arab world is always bright which is not the case in the United Kingdom for example they would rather use the word rose functional equivalent this procedure requires the use of a culture neutral or culture free item it involves neutralization or generalization of the source language word for example the word antaria this word is coined from a pre-islamic arabian figure called antara who was known for his poetry heroism and adventures this character is known in the arab world but not beyond so we can think of its functional equivalent like heroism or bravery descriptive equivalent in this procedure the translator describes the meaning of the culture item in several words for example al khula the arabic word al khula can be explained in few words because it has no exact equivalent in the target language we can say divorce initiated by the wife release for payment by the wife redemptive divorce divorce by redemption abdicative divorce synonym to use any target language equivalent to a source language word in a context where a precise equivalent may or may not exist this procedure is used for a source language word where there is no clear one-to-one -one equivalent and the word is less important than other components in the sentence this procedure is often used when translating adjectives and adverbs that have no equivalent in the target language for example the word wasima could be translated as pretty or beautiful the adjective wasima in arabic is used to describe an imposing and striking kind of beauty the english word beautiful is less evocative but it can be used as any synonym through translation it's the literal translation of a common collocation names of organizations and components of compound it can also be called calc or loan translation for example a souk souda black market in French Marche Noir Spanish Mercado Negro Italian Mercato Nero German Schwarz Market the German word Kindergarten is divided into Kinder children garden garden the same applies to the Arabic word Raudat Atfal in Spanish we have Jardin d'Infantia and in French Jardin d'Infant one of the most useful strategies for sharpening thinking skills its modulation Modulation can also be regarded as one of the benchmarks of professional and competent translators. Modulation is a variation of the form of the message 
obtained by a change in the point of view. It's simply to focus on how appropriate the message is to the target language reader. When can I use modulation? You may translate literally and come up with a grammatically correct structure, but it may seem unsuitable, unidiomatic, or awkward to the target language readers. Here you can think you can think of modulation which may be optional or obligatory. It depends on how inappropriate or awkward your direct translation is. Vinay and Dabane listed 11 types of modulation. Most of them can be found in an introductory book on philosophy and logic. We'll start with the negated opposite. For instance, in French, they say complain for no vacancies in English. Both direct and indirect forms have no negative implications. It depends on how natural and typical either term is used in the target language. But sometimes we find it very hard to use the direct meaning like the word liar, kathib. Can you call your close friends liars? Can you call an older colleague who is more senior at work liar, a liar? Here we can move to another level of translation where we can consider the connotative meaning, not the direct meaning. If you check the meaning of lying in dictionaries or language books, one may find, for example, the following definition. The one who intentionally says untrue statement is called a liar. So why don't we use the dictionary definition? A sitqu in Arabic, for example, means mutabaqat al hukm al waqa to tell what happens correctly. On the other hand, al kadhib mukhalafat al waqa. So you can say you are not telling the truth. Or you can put it more politely as it's not true. We can use the negative opposite, غير صادق, لم تقل الحقيقة, or أنت تخالف الواقع. All give the same meaning as كاذب. It depends on how acceptable your literal translation is to the target audience or culture. When the situation is tense, I think you, th you should think of modulation. The word كافر is translated as infidel, disbeliever, unbeliever, atheist. In dictionaries, but it's not precisely translated. Calling someone as infidel is very offensive in all languages. The Islamic definition of kafir is not reflected either. The word kafir can be translated into a denier of the truth in the Islamic text or non Muslim in interfaith dialogue. He is non Muslim and I am non Christian. Now we can talk. The two options may differ, but the underlying reference is still the same. The second type of modulation, reversal of terms. You can express the same idea the other way around. For example, it's not difficult. In Arabic we can say, min as sahl The same can be found in Spanish, is fathil. And in French, Elifasil. Another example, health insurance. In the German language, they refer the terms to sickness insurance. And in Spanish, they use disease insurance by reversing the terms. With the third type of modulation, one can move from cause to effect. For example, to translate this sentence into Arabic literally, we may not be able to transfer the intended message properly. You are quite a stranger. Why he has become a stranger? Maybe because we haven't seen him for a long time. So we can put in Arabic that way. لم نعود نراك it's also used in French. For example, this example in French, we can translate it back into 
English as we don't see you anymore. Another type of modulation is to move from concrete to abstract ideas and the other way around. For example, books are useful. We can also say القراءة مفيدة Reading is useful. By changing the concrete item books into an abstract concept القراءة Reading Sometimes this process could be obligatory or to put it in Vinay and Dabani's term fixed. For example ينشر الغسيل المتسخ to hang, to hang up the dirty washing or to air the dirty laundry this transition may not be easy to understand today in some countries where they stopped hanging up the washing outdoors on the grass for instance today they have dryers laundry drying racks so one can think of something similar like to dish the dirt or change to an abstract term gossip or spread malicious rumors or negative information the fifth type of modulation is to use the whole for part and part for whole for example al ad al it is translated into English as manpower, not labor hands. We use the whole person. The word I in we sent the night to them could mean a spy. It's used in both languages similarly. Here the process is optional. We can also change one part to another part. For example, it's more typical in English to say to put your fingers on the problem. But in Arabic, we can also use another body part, which is the hand. Hand, not fingers. Sometimes this process is obligatory. For example, to translate the following God's words into English, we have to use modulation. The word arjulakum, legs, is translated into feet, because we only wash our feet, not the whole leg. Changing passive into active. The passive voice can work well in both Arabic and English when the logical subject is ignored. That's if we have no by phrase. But once we have both subject and object, it becomes less formal in Arabic to use the passive. The car was sold by Bill. A sayara ba'aha Bill. Not a sayara bi'at bwasitat aw min qibal. We will have a separate video on how to translate the passive voice into English and Arabic later. Time to space. We can change time to space and space to time if they are co referent. In primary school, I was very shy. You can Translate the sentence literally. في المدرسة الابتدائية كنت خجولا. But also you can change the place, primary school, into time. حينما كنت, when I was. حينما كنت أدرس في المدرسة الابتدائية. أو حينما كنت في المدرسة الابتدائية. Exchange of term intervals for limits in time and space. We can exchange intervals for limits in time. For example, see you in a week. You can give a specific day. If you are talking to someone and you say to him, see you in a week. If you are talking to him on Sunday, for example, it means that you will see him on Sunday, on this Sunday. So, you can say see you in a week araka ba'da asbu' or araka yawm al ahad exchange of intervals for limits in space 
No parking between signs. ممنوع الوقوف بين العلامات أو العلامتين. Or you can say حدود المواقف. The last type of modulation is to change symbols. It's a very interesting and useful process for intercultural communication. For example, as like as two peas. In French, they have something different, like two drops of water. We have another symbol in Arabic. أشبه به من التمرة بالتمرة. Or you can say من الماء بالماء. Both can be found in Arabic literature. Recognize translation. This occurs when the translator uses a generally or officially recognized translation of any institutional term. For example, UN, الأمم المتحدة, not البلاد المتحدة. USA, الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية, not البلاد المتحدة الأمريكية. The words nation and state could be translated as البلاد, الأمم, الدول in different context. It depends on how it is used by any official entity. Compensation. It is to compensate the loss of meaning in the target text. This is said to occur when loss of meaning, sound effect, metaphor or pragmatic effect in one part of a sentence is compensated in another part or in a contiguous sentence. For example, Al-Hajj is translated as pilgrimage, but it could be translated next phrase as pilgrimage to Mecca, Islamic pilgrimage, because pilgrimage can be found in many religions. So we add another element to compensate for the loss of meaning. Comprehension analysis. This is the splitting up of a lexical unit into its sense components. Combination analysis in translation is not the same as that in linguistics. The basic process is to compare the source language word with another in the target language which has a similar meaning. Paraphrase. In this procedure, the meaning of the culture-specific term is explained in more detail, longer than what we do with descriptive equivalent. For example, Al-Arda could be translated as one of the Saudi folk art, a dance performed by men in groups while holding swords and is usually accompanied by drums and poetry recital. You can notice how long the sentence is is longer than what we do in descriptive equivalence. Couplets. It occurs when translators combine two of the above mentioned procedures, respectively, for dealing with a single problem. They further can use triplets, like, for example, يَصُومُ الْمُسْلِمُونَ فِي رَمَضَانِ Muslims fast in Ramadan. Muslims fast in the month of Ramadan. Muslims fast in Ramadan, the ninth month of the lunar calendar. Notes, addition, glosses. Such techniques can be employed to add extra information about a culturally specific word or expression in the translated text. Here, we can do one of the following procedures to add a glossary at the end of the text, to use footnotes or endnotes, to insert a partial or full explanation, either in parenthetical squares or free in text. To the above procedures, one may add omission, addition, explicitation, implicitation, generalization, specification, and many more. Thank you for watching and see you later.